Hello there, everybody! So, Butter Night, Jacob and welcome back to Fatal Mor. Uh, the house in Fatal Morgana. Ah, I can never get the title right. But, um, before I jump right in, I'm gonna go ahead and try to give. I think I've, I'm just gonna kind of try to buckle down a little bit on my theory here that I've got for this. So, the people that Morgana is torturing, I guess. I'm gonna stick with my theory that they are Mel, Yukimasa, and Jacopo. She kind of already confirmed the whole thing about, you know, you, or she, she, I don't know, Morgana just seems pretty, you know, malicious toward them, but, um, I, I tried thinking about it, and I'm just trying to figure out what could the reason be as to why she's doing this. So, if these are the three souls that I'm guessing she ha she reconstructed herself, then... Obviously, they must be events that happened before all of Michelle Giselle, all of that, before that, way before that. So, what I'm trying to figure out is what it could have been. And two possibilities kind of came into my head here. The first possibility is that these three stole from Morgana. Although, it seems kind of extreme putting them through endless, I guess, torment honestly. So, the other possibility that came to my mind is, well, what if these three, what if these three, Mel, Yukimasa, and Jacopo, killed Morgana, and her spirit was a lingering spirit, and did, did, I don't know, just did something, I guess. So, the only two theories, that's really the only two theories I can think of. Either they stole from Morgana, or they did something to her, as in either kill her, or just insulted her in some way that incurred her wrath. That's the idea that I've got. Anyway, let's just jump into the final visitor. We must be getting pretty close to the end right now. Time pressed onward, and then at long last you arrived. Oh! Oh my! Oh, splendid. You are finally woken. I have simply been waiting so long for this moment. Tending to the mansion all by my lonesome, ensuring it was ready for your return, Master, whenever that, that time may be. When I caught sight of you through the window, my heart fluttered. The time had finally arrived. Oh my, you do not know who I am. Do you not know who you are, either. That is quite the predicament. Then how about this? I am a servant of this mansion, and as such, I am familiar with the many incidents that have taken place here. I shall show you the history of this house, Master. Let us be off, then. And fear not. I merely entreat you to not let go of my hand. Should you hold it tightly, you need not worry about being washed away by the waves of history. No matter what happens, you mustn't let go of my hand. Oh! No matter what you see, never again let go of this hand. That is everything. I prepared a number of things to say when she was finished with her tale, but I can't manage to put any of them into words. I almost hate myself for thinking it would be so easy. For letting myself hope I could simply pull her back to her old self, except whatever had happened to her take her hand in mine, and that would solve everything. The truth is so much worse than I imagined. So much more harrowing. She was subjected not only to her own terrible fate, but every single one of this household's tragedies. The tales she had told me are things she witnessed with her, with her own eyes. How can I possibly blame her for forgetting me? For forgetting herself? After so many hundreds of years? No, I should be... Why? Why didn't you come for me? Why couldn't I have returned before she was so far gone? Why? Why did you show up now? Giselle. Because you opened the door to my memories, I now remember everything. But I didn't want to remember. 
I didn't want to be reminded of all those empty years. Of all the people who passed on, leaving me behind. Of you who refused to show up no matter how much I begged. I'm not the Giselle you knew anymore. I may have my memories, but I cannot go back to that time. My hands are stained with blood, my soul worn thin. The girl who would laugh at the simplest things, who would tell silly jokes and wasn't afraid to speak her mind, doesn't exist anymore. That Giselle is dead. How can you say I am the same girl? How can you say I feel the same way I did? How can you be sure that even now, I still love you? Can you deny the possibility that I no longer yearn for you? But the white-haired girl? Can you deny the possibility that my love for you has transformed into hate? She brings her hands up toward my throat, and I make no attempt to move her out of her way. When her fingers brushed against my skin, they feel as frigid as death itself. Far colder than anything I have felt from her thus far. If she were to wrap her hands around my neck, she wouldn't even have to squeeze to stop me from breathing. This is the fork in our road. One word will decide everything. I don't have much time. I have to say something before the cold robs me of my voice. Whoa! Wait, I didn't... What the fuck? I didn't even get a chance to... Okay. I didn't even get a chance to... Oh, okay. I wanted to deny it. She may have forgotten me, but what she felt still remains, as evidenced by her attraction to the white-haired girl, who had many physical similarities to me. Her feelings are still there. I sincerely believe that. But her arctic gaze caused me to waver for the briefest moment. Perhaps I only wanted to deny it for my own selfish reasons. It was only a few short seconds. But those seconds decided it all. Farewell, Michelle. She, je she slides her slender fingers down my neck, then gently shoves me back. G Giselle! Jesus. I'm falling, sinking into my own darkness. I reach my hand out, but I cannot grasp anything. Her hand. The hand I held for all this time so far away. I try to shout, but nothing comes out. I can neither answer her original question, nor say her name. Down and down, into the infinite void. Darkness consumes everything. My voice, my hands, my very being, and her gaze. My consciousness slips away. Why? Why did I hesitate? I wish I could have at least told you that I still loved you, even if you did not love me. Okay. Um. Are you sure you really wanted to let him go? Yes, I am sure. I see. I don't think I'll ever understand. If you hate someone, you should chain them down and torture them for all eternity. It was the perfect opportunity to trap his soul. I do not hate him. Oh, is that so, my dear? After everything you said, I simply assumed. I could never come to hate him. I could never want to see him dead or tortured. Oh? Then why did you say what you did? I don't think you would understand. Probably not. I'm not particularly interested in understanding either. It doesn't matter what happened in the interim. In the end, nothing's changed, has it, my dear? You are still my darling, devoted maid. With enough time, you will once more forget your name. <laughs> what a wonderful world this is. Uh. Um. Uh. 
Ending four, a moment of hesitate. You said, God damn it. What do you know? I fucking hesitated. I got thrown off by the st- I, I got thrown off and I just- Thank you. Thank you very much for doing that, you- You asshole of a novel. <laughs> okay. Guess I gotta do that again. Guess I gotta do that again. <laughs> well then. Guess I won't- Guess I'm not gonna hesitate this time. Okay, now it's time for me to deny it. Yes! Whoa! Holy shit, I just... Okay. The title of the game, you guys can't see it, but it just changed to Refutation. Holy shit. Of course. I'll deny it. Oh, by the way, just to be safe... I'm gonna save it. I was floating in the darkness. I heard a voice. Regrettably, it took me far too long to realize that it was your voice, crying for help, calling for me. You may have lost hold on your old self, but somewhere deep down, you kept calling for me, which is how I found my way here. I refuse to believe that it isn't real. I've refused to stomp on a love that survived for hundreds of years. By all means, hate me. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. I don't care if you spit bile at me for the rest of eternity. I will not let go of this hand. Because you asked me not to. I could kill you right now. If that's what you want, then go right ahead. But I'll fight you with all I've got. Giselle, I've missed you too much to lose you again. <laughs> I don't care if it makes you despise me. I don't care if you think I'm being inconsiderate. I want to save you. But, but I... I am not the Giselle you once knew. I'm an abomination. My mind and body are twisted beyond recognition. I'm a disgusting monster. The woman you fell in love with does not exist anymore. So just forget about me. You are the one who should be saved, set free from me. You look the same to me. Your manner of speaking, your temperament, your physical appearance may have all changed, but you are still the same Giselle I love. <laughs> you should have never have done anything for a foolish girl like me. You gave your life to save mine. And I hated you for that. I never once considered how you felt with those knights pointing their blades at you, or what drove you to allow me to live. I should have, but I didn't. I was the one who trusted the witch, and yet I complained when you never showed up. I unfairly resented you for it. I... I'm a horribly self-centered person. No, you're not. I just... Ugh. You would be so much better off. Someone pure and unburdened with all this nasty suspicion and doubt and animosity. You would be so much happier with someone like her. Giselle, you've been paying attention, haven't you? You were there for all the tales I told you. For everything that has happened up to this moment. So you should know just how loathsome a woman I am. Too weak to even keep herself together. No, Giselle. I'm nothing compared to her. Giselle! <laughs> See? You haven't changed one bit. You still get louder and louder the more you lose your temper. I... 
Why do you feel the need to compare yourself to her? Be because she is a much better match for you. Giselle, I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. I'm so sorry for keeping you waiting. And I want you to believe me when I say that I dearly missed you from the bottom of my heart. I wanted you back, and that has not changed. But I... Believe me. I love you. Uh, oh my god! I... I missed you so much too. Oh god. She leaps into my arms, and she's just as cold as ever. Her warmth deprived body feels like the embodiment of all my mistakes. I wrap my arms around her, and I'm immediately filled with unparalleled relief. Even if she sobs into my chest, her body cold as ice. And then... Whoa! The darkness parts. We are, once more, at the top of the observation tower. It's still shrouded in a miasma of shadows, but we're back in the mansion now. We have emerged from the darkness in her heart. Michelle. Yes? I'm sorry. For what? I never should have erased you from my memories. Yours are the memories I needed to hold on to tightest. I was so glad to hear you say you still loved me, even after learning the truth about me. Thank you so much. I'm incredibly relieved. As I watched, it felt like you were slipping further and further away from me, Giselle. It terrified me. Maybe it makes me a coward, or pitiful, but I was truly afraid of you coming to hate me. I would never hate you, Michelle. Never. Thank you. We must leave this place. What? It would not be wise for us to remain here long. The air is still thick with darkness. But... The front door won't open. And even if we could get out from somewhere, what would happen to us? We finally found each other again after so long. I want to share a quiet, modest life with you like before. What if that all disappears when we step outside? After all, we are... She doesn't finish, but I feel like I know what she was going to say. We're different now. She's... stepped far outside the bounds of mortality. And the same could be said of me. I am... the man known as Michel is... long since dead. The mansion itself does not follow the rules of nature either. As beings no longer in possession of their proper forms, stepping outside these walls could very well mean the end of us. I can't say what may lay in store, but we must return. Even though, by staying here, we could be together for all time? I don't imagine that would be a very happy life. There is no sun here, no chirping birds, no trees or breeze to rustle the leaves. That's a nice rhyme there, dude. If we stay here, the nothingness will eat away at us. We have finally retained our old selves. We need to take action now while we can. Jesus, I'm actually shaking here. What if I say I want to stay here? Then I'll drag you out. It's almost like we've switched places. Back then, it was you who wanted to stay. <laughs> it's also kind of funny hearing you speak favorably of the outside, and especially the sun. The words, that's all thanks to you, are on my lips. But before I can say them, I find myself hypnotized by her smile. That smile has picked me up so many times. She claims it's her only redeeming feature, but if she didn't have it, my life would have gone in a very different direction. I'm grateful to have gotten that back, too. Say, um, 
we're in the middle of a very, uh, touching reunion, wouldn't you say? I suppose so, yes. And wouldn't you say there's a certain way these things usually go? Huh? Uh, are you really going to make me say it? I was, um, hoping you might perhaps kiss me? Oh my god. What? What? Oh, seriously, what? Where'd all that boldness from a second ago go? What happened to all that momentum you were building? Uh, yes, uh, about that, I think that might be more uh, appropriate later. Later? How much later? After we find an exit! We're, you know, in a hurry. You're just making excuses because you don't want to. <laughs> My God, I'm losing it. <laughs> I swear that's not it. G G Giselle, let's save that for when things aren't as crazy. I can't relax and enjoy it right now. What are you, 12? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hush. All right, fine. But you'd better keep your word. Got it? P promise. Let's go then. Let's find our way out of the mansion. There, our frozen, our frozen time should begin moving again. That's hopefully where our future waits. It will be. No, we'll make it so. Yes, we will. If we leave the mansion, it should release our souls as well. And in doing so, should finally provide her deliverance. So I mustn't hesitate to end all of this. For both of us, we must start again. This is where we... What? <laughs> oh god, Morgana. It's Morgana, ain't it? Darkness. It's a blackness purer than anything I've experienced in this house. Not a trace of light anywhere to be found. Why did I ever think the house would let us go so easily? Why did I ever think our time in the darkness was over? Michelle! <laughs> the darkness surges through the open door like a wave, flooding the observation tower, like ivy growing wildly to cover every last inch of every surface. Consuming. Defiling. Eroding. Holy shit, this music! Our fingers slip apart, and concentrated rancor rains down upon us. How hideous a world this is. Uh, uh, no! Michelle! Please, please! Oh god, no. Don't let go of my hand! God damn it. Giselle! Uh, Michelle! I said I would never let her go again. I said I would get her out of this place. I swore I would. But as hard as I try to stretch, I can't reach your hand. God damn it! Help, Michelle! I can't move! I can't move my body! I went out of my way to give you a beautiful tragedy. So why must you so stubbornly insist on this ugliness? The more you struggle, my dears, the thicker and more palpable your filthiness becomes. It's sickening. Wouldn't you agree? She's always spat her bile with a song-like cadence. Singing like a little girl, chirping like a morning bird. She celebrates misery. And she watches from the worst possible moment to let out a cackle. Morgana! Oh my god! Ew! Uh... Oh! Oh my lord! I think you need a haircut. I swear, you two are hopeless. I pity you, I give you my deepest condolences. L let go! Let me go! Don't, don't take me away from him! 
Giselle! The darkness seeping into her growth grew thicker by the moment, and its black tendrils weren't just wrapped around her, but me as well. Stop this, Morgana! Let her... Let her go? <laughs> wow. Nothing more original? <clears throat> I need a devoted puppet to protect this mansion for me. So I can't give her up. Not even at your request. Besides, why should I give back something you threw away? Something you abandoned again and again? What are you talking about? You still haven't figured it out, my dear? Or are you just feigning ignorance for your own convenience? You always did like to withhold anything that might prove disadvantageous. <laughs> Michelle! <clears throat> Giselle, give me your hand! Reach harder! Reach as hard as you can! Grab... Grab my hand! I, I, I can't do it! It's like... It's like I'm tied up! I can't move at all! She's right there! She waited so many hundreds of years for me. Finally managed to reclaim, to reclaim herself. And she's right there! So why can't my hand go any farther? Why can't I reach her wrist, her hand, or even a strand of her flowing hair? Why can't I get her back again? Michelle! Jeez. Ugh. Her voice is growing fainter, more distant. The darkness shrouds her, taking her away from me. Her arms, her fingers, the hand she led me with. Her smiling face, her once glowing grin, and her now more modest smile. The witch's darkness, stealing every last bit of her. Stop! Please don't do this! Take me instead of her! Why? Why does it have to be her? Why her? Morgana! Jesus. Uh. Why? Because your work is done, my dear. By all accounts, as the one who resurrected me, you should have become my guide as well. But you let a silly but you let a silly woman emotionally manipulate you. And you gave up on cursing others. And then you threw away your life, deluded into thinking you were protecting her. Morgana! You already gave up the position once. Don't think you can just walk up and ask for it back. Set her. Set Giselle free! I'll do anything you ask. If you need a puppet, I'll be your puppet! If you want more from me, it's yours for the taking. But I can't leave her to remain in this cursed house any longer. You certainly have let your obsession for this girl take its toll on you. I much prefer the old pessimistic, cynical Michelle. It wasn't until I met Giselle that I truly became human. She made me into what I'm supposed to be. I can't lose her again. Is that so? Well... You'll come to the harsh realization soon enough that everything you saw in her was just a facade. It was not! <laughs> All right, then. If you want her back so badly, you can have her. But in exchange, I want you to entertain me. Will you endure maddening agony for me? Will you know pain enough to make you howl? Will you face despair again and again and again? If you need her that badly, you can bear anything, can't you? <clears throat> if that is what you want from me, if that will allow her to see the sun once more. <laughs> Brilliant. God. G Wait! Morgana! Morgana! As you wish, foolish boy. I was looking for a way to keep busy anyway, so I'll use you to kill some time. Find your way to me, my dear. Find your way to me without going mad or succumbing to despair. And do hurry, or she might lose her mind again. <coughs> those memories you forced her to relive, those hundreds of years she spent locked away in her shell, 
All that fear that ate away at her. It's a bit much to have to reflect on with a clear mind, wouldn't you say? That's why I need to be there for her. Why I have to get her out of here. That's my obligation to her. You're the one who let go of her hand, though. <laughs> you can put a broken cup back together, but the slightest tap in the wrong place will shatter it again. Morgana! The witch's cackling fades into the distance. My outstretched hand is completely enveloped in the shadows. I can't even make out the faintest outline of it. Oh boy. God, there's fucking music, though. And I can't tell if I'm sinking, floating, being pushed along some invisible stream, or falling with incredible speed. My eyes are open, but they can detect nothing. The complete lack of sound is almost painful. Nothing. Anything, anywhere. Void. My consciousness begins to drift. Vague remnants of the feeling of her hand and mine are all my only link to reality. My only, my one and only landmark. Giselle. I must get her back. She waited, enduring for hundreds, no, almost a thousand years. And now it's my turn to act. I have to hold that resolve. Hold it firm. So that I never forget her again. So that I never lose myself again. Oh jeez, I just saw that the title changed again. Malevolent Supreme. Holy shit. Even if I'm consumed by the darkness, you must never back down. You must never look away. You must never lose her. The House in Feta Morgana, the story behind the story. What? Achievement unlocked, The Maid's Tale. Hey, Master. Hello? Is anyone in there? Master? Oh, good. Welcome back. What's gotten into you? Ugh. I thought you had fallen asleep with your eyes open. I am not accustomed to people needing my attention. Or I suppose, talking face to face at all. What the hell? Story behind the story. Okay. This is... my mansion? Giselle's right in front of me, smiling like she always did. Smiling for me. You're not hurt, Giselle. You have been alone for ten years, but now I'm living here with you. So what do you say we do a little practice conversation? Practice conversation? What exact... What exactly do you think I am? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no offense intended. I just thought it'd be nice if you had more back and forth skills. So in short, you're saying I'm such a poor conversationalist I need training. Hey, don't get so snippy. That's not what I meant. I'm saying we don't talk enough, and I want to talk to you more. It's fun. This is an old memory, from when Giselle first returned to the mansion, and we were just starting our new life together, when we were still feeling around in the dark. What exactly would you like to talk about, then? Each one- each other, of course. I have nothing to say. Now, 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 let's not be rash. It can be anything. Things you like, things you don't like. Start with something small, insignificant. Does that serve any purpose? It does, yes. The more you know about someone, the closer you feel to them, and the better friends you can become. Is that how it works? Now that that's out of the way, ask me something. Ask me anything and I'll gladly answer. Her eyes are lit up like a child's. Is she really so eager to converse with me? I don't believe it. What's the matter? I'm ready for anything. Very well, I'll ask whatever comes to mind. Go for it! Uh-uh. No. Save. Okay. New beginnings? Okay. 
You haven't told me your age. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your permanence. Do you like me? Do you like being here? Of course, I love it here. Being with you, being able to talk to you like this. See, that I don't understand. What? Why not? I find it difficult to believe there exists any reason speaking with me be would be anything but unpleasant. Mm, you're so negative. Uh, uh, oh, hush. I say that, for example, instead of me, there was someone not so pessimistic here. You would rather be talking to them, wouldn't you? I really do enjoy this, truly. I will admit my time down that village was, for the most part, delightful. But how should I put this? I started realizing, yeah, I'm kind of forcing myself to fit that image. And I'm trying to convince myself that that's okay. But somehow, when I'm here, there's none of that. I wonder why that is. I... I certainly wouldn't know. <laughs> I suppose you wouldn't. I, I know. Maybe I think of you as a kid now. Come again? I love talking to kids. Well, hey now, don't give me that look. What I'm trying to say is, you're very sincere, Master. You're not going to smile and then stab me in the back when I turn the other way. I can relax around you, which is nice. I... see. Ah, you just blushed, didn't you? You're blushing, you adorable little thing. That's alright, you're allowed to fall for me. <laughs> is there any window in particular you like to be thrown out of? No fun at all! <laughs> um, you haven't told me your age. My age? Hey, take a guess. Um... 19. I thought she would tell me anything. Um... Uh... <laughs> I could be a dick and just say, you must be 30. <laughs> okay, um... Um... 20. Wow, you're exactly- Holy shit, I was close! I was saying 19, but 20 was there was the closest of- Hey! Wow, you're exactly right! You're surprisingly astute, Master. And what's surprising about that? I didn't expect you to get it on your first try. Have you been secretly watching me? Oh, Master you. You're making me blush. Oh, God. But why the silent death stare? I'm struck with an overwhelming urge to hurl you out a window. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're no fun. Okay, it's your turn now. How old are you, Master? I'm going to guess 22. As I recall, I should be 27. Oh my goodness, I was off by five years. 27? I should be 27 this year. Oh wow, you're much older than I expected. What did you expect? You are very, very mellow, like I would expect of an older man. But every once in a while, you give the impression of a teenage boy. Um, for what it's worth, I mean that in a good way. For what it's worth. Hmm. Um, to know your preferences. W wow, how very forward of you. Huh? My taste in men is the last thing I expected you to ask about, Master. I don't recall specifying people. No, 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 don't fret the details. It's only natural to be curious, so let's make it about that. And that's the last thing I wanted to talk about. All right, then. Tell me about your first crush, Master. And I have to start? I never had one. What? No, I'm not buying it. You were living at home until ten years ago, weren't you? Surely there was someone who caught your eye. There was not. Without missing a beat. Oh, fine, then I'll go. My first crush was the son of a blacksmith. You missed the part where you ask, what kind of guy was he? This is such a pain. Since you asked, he was a huge muscular fellow. He was so tall, he would always hit his head on the doorway whenever he came to our shop to trade. Oh my god. Well, at least we have that in common. We kept hitting our heads on the friggin' doorway. <laughs> oh? Nice beefy guys really are great, huh? D mm. They make your heart get all fluttery and tight. Are you trying to imply I don't have a chance? 
though I think that was more admiration than love. You know, the way a group of girls would get together and fawn over a popular good-looking guy? It was like that. So you're saying the buff bastard was popular? Very much so. Wonder what love feels like. I never got the chance to find out before ending up like this. Awkward. Oh, I I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to get all dark on you. Say whatever's on your mind. I don't deserve your consideration. It was my family that put you through that after all. Perhaps it is my reticence that causes her to watch her step around me. Damn. Need to come up with something to say. When I was 14. Oh? You asked about my first crush. Ah! I knew you had one! So tell me, what was she like? She was the daughter of a noble family. Her name was... Amy. And she was a year older than me. Ah, love between nobility. A world only I can only even imagine. It never went anywhere. What? You didn't even try to woo her? You didn't shower her in presents? Were you by chance a late bloomer master? She was my brother's fiance. Oh, I see. Awkward. So it was a love that could never be realized. That's sad. Not really. Besides, I don't feel anything for her anymore. And what I felt then was just impulses. I guess that makes us both inexperienced. I suppose it does. Uh, um, okay, I think that's enough of that. So it is. Extreme awkwardness. Tell me about your family. You want to know about my family? We're pretty normal, I think. Not much interesting in not much interesting about us. We have been able to get citizenship in the capital, but we weren't super rich or anything. In fact, it was because we were having money troubles that I ended up here. It's not easy for three women to make it out on their own. You didn't have a father or any brothers? No. We lost my father to a plague when I was young. And since then it's been me, my mother, and my older sister. But they're both bright, lively people. Our family motto is, a smile can make anything better. Maybe that explains why she can still smile now, even after nearly succumbing to despair. I've always kind of wanted some brothers, though. Men are more suited to physical labor, yes. Not quite what I was going for. I feel like, I don't know, the kinds of things you would ask a brother and a sister for help with are different. I'm not sure how to explain it, but... A guy with broad shoulders and muscular arms is someone you can look up to, for instance. Someone who looks like they'd always keep you safe. She's never been portrayed by family, it would seem. She can't even imagine family hurting her. She has no idea those closest to you, those who are supposed to care about you more than anything, can be your greatest enemies. And that is a sad, very, very sad truth. The, just because, I mean, the, the possibility, you know, that blood is a bond heavier than any chain. Um, Master? I believe your brothers are still on your side. It's been so long. I don't know if they are. I don't know what they think about me anymore. I'm sure they're still your allies. You... You want to believe it too, don't you? You want to believe they're not enemies? Let's believe in them together, then. Anything you want to believe, you should. It's such a better way to look at the world than the other way around. You have to be positive, or one day you'll crack. Always remember to have faith so that that doesn't, ha that doesn't happen. Ah, uh, I don't understand. She's honest about her emotions in a way I simply cannot be. She is the exact opposite of me in that regard. And yet, she can still read me. I don't get it. How can she understand me like that? It's like she can read my mind. If only... If only I could just tell her everything. Make it all another page in our mindless chatter. Get everything weighing down on me off my chest. Is something the matter? 
you're cruel. What? I said you're cruel. I'm sorry. Ignore me. In preparation for the day you can finally go back home, you're gonna have to stop being such a picky eater. Where did that come from? Think about how terrible it would be if, when that day finally came, you went back sickly and weak and emaciated. You wouldn't be able to enjoy yourself. You're still alright, Master. You're doing okay. So let's try to keep you healthy. See what I was saying, Master? With just a short conversation, I know you better than I did before, and you and me. That's fine and well, but what do I do with that knowledge? Huh? You don't do anything with it. It's fun learning things you didn't know before. You got that right. That's all there is to it. And what happens when there's nothing left to learn? That's a day I don't think will ever come. People are always changing, growing, so there is no upper limit to what you can know about them. There's always something new to discover. Maybe we'll be here for many more years, or maybe you'll be able to go home sooner than you expect. But either way, I hope we can keep getting to know each other until then. And of course, if you're open to it, it doesn't have to end there. We can continue getting to know each other for years to come. Uh, hey now, what are you looking away for? What do you think? Because you keep throwing me off balance. A few months ago, I was doing everything in my power to avoid her. Yet now, now, that smile of hers seems so oddly enchanting. I don't understand. I will do my best so that we can make this work. Ah, I'm glad to hear it. <sighs> Giselle, I was too awkward back then to even compliment you on your smile, to put my feelings into words. I was too cynical to accept what you said at face value, which I know caused you plenty of grief. I'm not much better than I was now than I was then, but I will tell you this. When I next see you, I want more than anything to let you know how much I adore your smile, and how much I don't want to lose you or it ever again. You must never reclaim your old selves. Become... Oh! Become my loyal servants, always at my side. And curse them with me, my dears. Eh, fuck you, Morgana. Eternal suffering on all their souls. But I, whoa, holy shit, blood. Oh my god! My consciousness, wavering like a ship at sea, is slowly drawn back to the surface. With each new breath, feeling gradually returns to my fingers. I can hear the pattering of rains from somewhere, and the sound of a crackling fire. Creak, creak, creak. Splurt, splurt, splurt. It takes a moment for me to realize that I'm in the very same spot where I first awoke. I don't know how I got here, but I'm sitting in a rocking chair hunched forward. My head feels like someone filled it with rocks, and I'm having difficulty focusing. My joints are creaking and I feel like I'm going to vomit. A suffocating odor hangs over the room. What is this? Giselle. Giselle! Everything comes back to me all at once. That's right. I watched Morgana kidnap her. I watched the witch drag her into the darkness, unable to reach her hand. Where are you, Morgana? <clears throat> I know you're there, cackling as you look down on me. Say something, witch! I will find you, and I will take her back. What on earth? There's a pool of liquid at my feet, rising just up short of my ankles. It's sticky and uncomfortably warm. Every step I take makes splat, splat noises. This is... Blood. 
The mansion has taken on a very different face from when Giselle was leading me through its halls. Blood of unknown origin not only covers the floor, but also streams down the walls and drips from the ceiling. Ew! I'm speechless as I behold the dreadful scene. Every breath I take tastes and smells of rust. <clears throat> it's all so unreal. Beyond my comprehension, all I can do is stare, aghast, feeling like I might pass out. Giselle, are you seeing this? The same twisted nightmare as me? An image of her floating alone in a vast sea of blood flashes through, flashes through my mind. That vision kicks me into motion. I promise, I will come for you. So please, just hang in there for a little longer. I begin walking, or more accurately dragging my heavy feet forward. The constant splashing of blood against my ankles grates at my already taut nerves. Morgana told me to find my way to her, and I can think of only one place she would be. She and Giselle must be there. Of course. The stained glass window is splattered with blood, too. It creates trails like streams of tears running down the Archangel's face. I give the window a brief glance before making my way to the door leading to the observation tower. However, why won't it open? There shouldn't be a lock. So why? Lustrous black chains seal the metal door. I can recall no such obstruction present during either my life or my time after. What on earth is going on with this house? No. That's not important right now. What matters is making it through this door. Damn it! I pull and I push, but the chains won't give an inch. They feel sturdy enough that I probably wouldn't cut, couldn't cut through them either. There has to be some way. I consider giving up here and scouring the rest of the house, but I'm convinced the tower is my best chance. The fact that it's sealed now, when it, whoops, it hadn't been before, feels like a challenge more than a deterrent. I trace a length of chain with my hand, and at the end of it I find a peculiar looking lock into which the ends of several chains have been fed. There are three keyholes? Morgana fashioned a custom lock just for this. I need to find three keys to open the door then. But I have no idea where to begin my search. I lived here for more than ten years, yet it feels like I've stepped into a strange land. No, it's not the same house. Searching blindly is only going to waste time, and the longer I take, the more danger she's in. I met someone before who had a key. It was before I had reclaimed myself, and I was exploring the mansion alone. Think, Michelle, who was it? The paint- That's right, the painting! Oh my god! Like everything else in the house, the painting is covered in blood. That it depicts a serene rural landscape only makes the contrast that much grimmer. I remember talking to this painting, assuming I wasn't hallucinating. I have a question for you. Are you awake? Please wake up. Ah. Can you hear my voice? Please say something. You reside here in the house like the witch, don't you? You've been here with her all this time, haven't you? Then you must know how to get into the observation tower. I have the three keys that I need to open the lock. I need to get into the tower. Please, tell me where I can find the keys. Say something, damn it! Answer my question! Someone there! What? What's the matter? I feel kind of strange. Did the witch do something to me? Please, get a hold of yourself. Everything's all red. I can't s stand it. I don't remember using that color. 
I reach my hand up to try to wipe as much of the blood off of the canvas as possible, but I can't even smear it with my sleeve, let alone get it off. Y you're wasting your time, but it's th the thought that counts, counts. Any, 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 any way, y you had a question for me. G go on, I'm listening. I guess the painting isn't on the witch's side then. The door to the observation tower has been locked. I need to gather three keys, I think. That's my assumption, since the lock has three keyholes. Do you know of any such keys? And if so, could you tell me where they might be? Keys, 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 keys. Keys, 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 keys. Please stay with me. You're the only one I can ask for help. Keys, 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 keys. Damn it. I'm guessing that this is probably in some way com probably in some way connected to, 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 to her pa past pa 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 her past y you know the events the witch is always always cursing about what happened b between her and those th 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 three men oh my god <sighs> what happened between them the keys are probably with the, th the, th the three of them. The three shadows. You must have seen them. Three men. Shadows. Find them and then 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 And you'll probably find the keys too. B -b 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 watch yourself. They, they aren't all likely to trust you easily. The, the, the depths of their sins grows greater the farther you go. V visit them in order. In order, in order, in order. The, 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 the first one probably won't be a problem. So, t t t tell me something. Y you're m m m m michelle aren't you? What? I've wanted to uh, apologize to you for so long. Wait! What do you mean? D do you know me? Did you? What do you want to apologize for? Tell me, please! C could you be? But why? How? Wait, is this the guy that painted him? When everything else is finished, I'm going to need to visit this painting again. But now, I have other things to do. The painting gave me a hint about where I could find the keys. I don't know anything about this past Morgana has with the three men. I never asked her about herself, after all. So maybe I'm going to end up having to do more than simply take Giselle back. Has my... Has our involvement with the witch caused us to be swept up into a twisted maelstrom of fate? Regardless, I need to get to work. The painting said to visit them in order. I assume he was referring to the order I entered the three doors? Uh... Well... If memory... If memory serves... I guess we... Yeah, we do have to go in order, so the first one would have to be Mel. The next one would be Yukimasa, and the final one would be, um, Jacopo. So, I gotta visit them in order. I might record a little extra tonight, by the way, just so you know. I make my way to the Rose Garden. The corridor leading there is a mess, and the wooden door is rotting away. I can smell the flowers on the other side. Everything is different from when I was alive. From when Giselle planted and raised that single rose. A scene from the past spreads out before me. The field of once proudly flourishing roses is now withered and grey. Knowing how beautiful it once been only makes it that much more dispiriting. A bitter breeze brushes past me. Solitude hangs over the garden like a thick fog eating away to me. This isn't what I wanted. Someone, get me out of here. Oh God, tell me that I'm not the bad one here. 
A young man's shadow stands off to the side, muttering listlessly to himself. I recognize his voice. Do you have the key? The boy and I have never met, but I feel like I know him quite well, like we've been acquainted for many years. I know how polite and mild-mannered he is. I know how kind and how vulnerable, how human his heart is. However, very little of that boy seems to remain. This isn't what I wanted. Oh, God. Please answer me. Someone get me out of here. Tell me that I'm not the bad one here. Answer me, Mel Rhodes! I know that's you! Huh? As soon as I say the Shadow's name, it turns to face me. I still can't make out much detail, but it seems slightly less tenuous now. Who are you? How do you know my name? My name? My name is Michelle. I once lived here in this mansion. Michelle? I... Oh, I know that name. I know it very well. Something's not right. You look different from the Michelle I remember. I am not the Michelle you know. Our names simply sound the same. Oh. That makes sense. She would never come see me. I have a question for you. Do you have the key to the observation tower? I do. Would you please give it to me? I need to get into the tower. And what do you need there? There's someone there I need to find. That's all? It may not sound like much to you, but it means a great deal to me. You're not one of the prisoners, then? No. I came here of my own will. To find this person? Exactly. Then maybe you can help me. Help you how? Set me free. Convince her to release me from this place. I'm begging you. The anguish emanating from the boy's shadow is so thick it causes me to recoil. There's a threat of dark desperation in his voice. Has he, be, has he been imprisoned here for hundreds of years like Giselle? Promise me you'll get me out of here. I... Am I even equipped to judge whether that would be a good decision or not? All I know of him is this time in the mansion during the Era of Roses. I know nothing else of his life. I don't even know if I would be capable of keeping such a promise. Do I have the strength to save anyone other than her? Do you... do you absolutely need the key? You won't agree to help me without it, will you? What? I... um... I dropped it. Over there. Huh? The boy is pointing to a thick bramble of roses. Despite the flowers themselves being wilted, the thorns are still sharp. It was an accident, I swear. But I didn't want to scratch up my arm, so I left it there. It's not my fault there are so many roses. Thorns, sorry. I really want to hit this boy. Why couldn't you just said so? Because I thought if I didn't have the key that you wouldn't help me. There's only so much I can do, regardless of whether you have the key. I cannot promise you anything, nor can I be the judge of you. I see. I do not have enough information to make such a, such a decision. Cheap promises and superficial kindness only serve to destroy the both of us. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to retrieve the key. What? You'll never get it out of those thorns. I don't care if it's at the bottom of the ocean. I will have that key. You're wasting your time. I approach the bramble, reaching out for it with my right hand. From behind me, I can sense the boy watching. First, I attempt to spread the tangled thorn-ridden stem so I can put my arm in without injuring myself. But they seem to be made of iron rather than plant and my efforts prove mostly fruitless. The only opening barely, is barely large enough to fit an arm in, in and it resembles the toothy mouth of a beast. Looking around the garden, I can't find anything that looks extreme, remotely useful. I guess my only option is reaching in. That's not going to stop me. Oh boy. I lean down, inserting my right arm into the thorny cavern. Immediately, they begin ripping away at my sleeve and gnash and gashing at my flesh. <clears throat> Blood spills down my arm. I'm long since dead, no longer human, but the pain is still agonizing, still very much real. Giselle, she doesn't bleed. She doesn't feel pain. Am I not the same as her, then? That doesn't matter right now. Focus on getting the damned key!
Streams of crimson spread through the steel-like tangle... I'm sorry. Through the steel-like tangle, gnawing at my arm like a ravenous animal. animal. <clears throat> well, the hell is the key? The thorny stems are twisted and layered so thick I can't see inside at all. As I dig around blindly, I start losing feeling in my arm. It's an endless deluge of pain. Hey, cut it out. You're going to lose your arm. I will not stop until I have the key. Don't ask me for help. I wasn't even considering it. I collect what remains of my gradually fading sensation and focus it into my fingers, praying even one of them will brush against the key. Damn it! But as much as I search, as much as I dig, I find nothing so much as so much as resembling a key. Which means it must be deeper than I can reach my arm. Even so, I cannot give up. Hey, uh please be quiet right now. I need to focus. I'm sorry, I, I do have the key actually. You son of a you what? I'm so sorry. It didn't look like you were willing to help even if I gave it to you, so... Plus, you told me not to give it to anyone for any reason. Hold still so I can beat you! I didn't mean you any ill will! You most certainly did! I'll give you the... I'll, please, I'll give you the key, so please have mercy. Oh, God. You little prick. Well, I mean, he was afraid of the witch, so... Ah, eh. damn it! Trembling in fear, the boy's shadow sticks out her hand, holding the key. The arm I used to dig through the thorns is so bloody and gashed I can barely look at it, but it does still function. And so I take the key from him with my right hand. Okay, we got a key. But why couldn't you use your other hand? That's gross! That's the idea. You're kind of a jerk, you know. And that's a laugh coming from you. Do you have any idea how much that hurt? I... I know. I'm sorry, really. But hey, you're alive, so no big deal, right? But, wait. Can you actually say either of us are alive? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I do appreciate you giving me the key, though. Seeing as it seemed to be rather important to you, too. Hey, this person you want to get back. Really worth going through all this for? She is. She's the one person who ever loved me. And she's waiting for me. I see. You know, I had someone that meant a lot to me too. My sister. Which one? Which? The one with flakes and hair. Like me. If you happen to see her, do something nice for her, please. That, I would say, is your responsibility. Yeah, you're right. But I'll keep it in mind. Thanks. In the tale I witnessed, the boy pushed his sister away. For an understandable reason, admittedly. But now he seems to bear no grudge for her. Something else happened between them. Even if it did, I don't have time to ask about it. I'll be on my way. All right. Take care. There are two more keys. Watch out, though. They're not the most friendly people. And they'll probably be even more enraged locked up like this. I appreciate the warning. If only someone like you had shown up sooner and taken the keys from us. Goodbye. Goodbye, voice, whose I cannot remember which voice I, cho I gave to you. After bidding me farewell, the boy's phantom dissipates into the shadows of the, whoopsie, of the Rose Garden. I wonder if he's gone back to mindlessly muttering his regrets. I should get going. Alright, the next spot is the cellar. That's where Yukimasa is. Okay. I'm gonna get all three keys, and that's probably where I'm going to end it. Timelines. Oh boy. <clears throat> Time for me to voice this character again. Probably. 
I descend the stairs, opening the cellar door. The first time I visited this room, the smell of blood from within was nearly suffocating. Now the entire house reeks of it, and I've started to go numb to the odor. Well, there's no one here. Am I in the wrong place? I begin exploring the cellar, hoping to find the key hidden away or abandoned somewhere. As I reach my hand out to investigate one area... Ooh, hello there, Yukimasa! A shadow leaps out of the thick darkness. It's so swift I have no time to react. My body freezes in place. A shadow stands before me, holding the tip of a blade mere inches from my face. A key. You have a key. I do, yes. Cold sweat trickles down my back. My voice is shaking and there's no hiding it. The shade appears to be glaring at me though I cannot make out its face. After a few seconds, it withdraws its blade. Let me see it. The boy's key. Did he give it to you? In the Rose Garden, yes. Are you two acquaintances? How could that be, though? You are from a completely different era and country. Who... Who are you? I'm... No. Never mind. Who you are is irrelevant to me. Are you... Are you human now? If you are speaking of my nature, then no is the only answer I can give you. You didn't kill me, though. If you wanted to, you could easily skewer me where I stand. If that's what you want, I'd be happy to oblige. What did you come here for? For your key. I came to ask if you would give it to me. You mean to open that door? I need to get into the tower, yes. I see. Take it. What? That was extremely easy! The man's shadow tosses the key at my feet. I'm not quite sure what to think. I didn't expect him to give it up so readily. What? Take it. I won't stab you in the back while you're bending over. I thought you were supposed to hold on to this at all costs. I no longer have any reason to guard that key. In the past, I might have severed your head from your shoulders the moment you mentioned it, though. What point in the past? That's a question I wish I knew the answer to. Hey. Do you know why I'm here? Where this place is? When is it? Why can't I get out of here? What's happened to me? I... Tell me! I have no idea what's going on! Not a single goddamn idea! Neither do I. Get out. Take the key and get out of here. Get out! Jesus. I can't bring myself to say anything to the enraged Shadow, so I follow his command, picking up the key and departing the cellar. Damn. Well... Sorry, Yukimasa. Or, er, bye, Yukimasa. I thought I was dead for a second. This makes two, though. What could have happened between these people? The painting mentioned a past with them, and Morgana spoke of the wicked men she cursed. Does that mean they did something awful enough to earn Morgana's spite? Right now, though, I must push onward. If I'm not mistaken, the final key should be in that room. The room with the... Uh, the billiards table? What is billiards anyway? Actually, not a bad game, honestly. It's kind of funny. I don't know. I've never been good at it, but... It's still fun to play, even if I'm terrible at it. I should get moving. Okay. Time to... Time to bust out the old Jacopo. Once I have this key, I can get into the observation tower. I'm almost certain Morgana is waiting for me there. With Giselle. So I gather up my, my resolve and hurry to the last room, not wanting to take a, even a second longer than necessary getting her back. I can hardly believe my eyes when I step into the den. In the middle of the room is a large rectangular table. Several balls roll across its surface and perched on one corner. Looking down at the floor is her. 
Giselle. Giselle! The question of why she's here never crosses my mind. All I feel is elation to see her once more. There's no room for anything else in my head. I run over to her, put my hand on her shoulder. Thank goodness you're all right! And turn her toward me. Oh my god! Giselle? Giselle! I shake her, causing her head to droop lifelessly. There's not a trace of light in her unmoving eyes. Uh, why? Giselle, why? Uh, uh, say, say something, Giselle! Say anything, please! This... this can't be. Y you... you can't be. You can't be! My mind goes blank. I can't catch my breath. The world is hazy. Why? Why, Giselle? Why did I have to find her like this? Why? I swore I would do anything. I swore I would never lose her again. No, 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 no. Uh, this can't be. A thought crosses my dazed, despair-wrought mind. It's probably nothing more than vain hope, but... Not a drop of blood spilled from my breast. That's right. She doesn't bleed. So this... This can't be her. This isn't her! Or maybe... Or maybe Morgana has the power to alter Giselle's very nature. Kill her with the flick of a wrist. No. I don't even want to think about it. There's no hope to be found down that path. All I can do is pray. Beg for her to still be alive. Or if alive isn't the right word, herself. My prayers bring me back to reality. Which is when I realize... <laughs> there's something hard pressed against the back of my head. I hear a harsh metallic clink. <clears throat> a piercing bang rips through the air as I drop to the hard floor. My ears are ringing painfully. Through the cloud of smoke and confusion, I see a man's silhouette. Hmm. Missed. It takes several moments for me to recognize the object in his hand as a gun, not only because it's draped in shadow, but because I have never seen one with my own eyes. Had I not witnessed what they were capable of through the stories, I would not have understood how terrifying they were. Not a problem, though. I'll finish you with the next one. Now, you hold still, boy. Start running around like a rat and I can't guarantee you a painless death. Wait! Hold on a second! What are you trying to kill me for? Because you make too much goddamn noise, that's why. Don't tell me. You're the one who... What? I turn my gaze toward the large table. Giselle... isn't there. It must have been an illusion after all. The realization sends a wave of relief through me. I still have a gun in my face, though. Curious man you are. Does the table warrant your attention more than me? I have a request. Could you give me the key in your possession? That's all I need. And then I'll leave and start making a racket. I'm not sure you understand your predicament, boy. Because if you think you're in any position to be asking favors, you're dumber than you look. Huh! First off, I don't even know what key you're talking about. I don't believe that. The other two had keys. You're telling me they gave you their keys. Sounds like they really do know each other. See for yourself. I believe you should recognize these. Are you collecting them to enter the tower? Are you going to see Morgana? There seems to be a hint of, ten a hint of tension in the man's voice. Though I can't see his face, I can sense the waves forming within him. I brace myself for either rejection or hot lead, but the apparition gives me neither. Take me with you! What? You have the other keys, don't you? Then you can open the door! Bring me to the witch! Wait, 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 slow down. What are you planning to do when you see her? What do you think? She has to... She... Has... To... He's gone. She has to... What? What was he trying to say? Huh? 
On the floor where the shade stood is a new key. Curious though I am about his last words, this makes three. I have all the keys now. <laughs> Stop sending chills down my spine, damn it! Are you trying to rile me up, Morgana? Are you enjoying yourself up there, showing me these phantoms and watching me squirm? Just you wait. I'm on my way. I give the room a brief once over before making my way back to the chapel. And that's the end of this video. Since we seem to be getting so close to the end, I think that the next recording just might be the end, which means I'm gonna have to hold a voting poll. Which I should probably schedule soon. For what's going to take, uh, Beta Morgana's place. Because I've already got something planned for... I don't know. Holy crap, we're coming this close to ending two Let's Plays, actually. 999. Well, we already ended 999, but now we're ending this one. Shit, I gotta do a lot of pre preparation. I need to plan my next uh, voting poll, don't I? <laughs> oh well. But, um... Everything's starting to wrap together nicely. I wonder what Jacopo was trying to say. She has to... Die? She has to let go? Or... I don't know. But... I wonder what the connection... What... Okay... What did Jack... Okay, what exactly did Jacopo, Mel, and freaking Yukimasa do to Morgana to piss her off this freaking much? What did they do? Spurn her? Oh, uh, okay. Here's here's a fan fiction theory right here. Yukimasa banged Morgana, and then the two children were freaking Jacopo and Mel, and then all of a sudden Yukimasa cheated on Morgana, and then Morgana got pissed and fed up, became a witch, and then cursed their souls to eternal damnation because they went out because Yukimasa went after a hussy. I probably need to shut up now. Anyway, if you guys like this, be sure to let me know. So thank you guys so much for watching. I feel like we're getting close to the end, and I'm getting really giddy. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.